Hi, everyone. I'm Norma Loeb, founder of the Lewy Body Dementia Resource Center. This video series has been created to bring awareness through firsthand experience of people living with Lewy Body Dementia, their caregivers, and through expert physicians. This crucial information will be shared with healthcare professionals, with families, and the general public to heighten awareness and to enable correct diagnosis. Please know we are here to help you every single day on our live helpline. I thank you for watching. I could have a, a couple come over for dinner and um, they'll say things like, Joel, you know, I've been here for an hour already and you know what? I don't see any difference. You look exactly the same. I don't believe you have this disease, okay? And I, have, I, I don't have a bad temper, but I came very close to going bonkers, okay? Because I, I tried to explain that it depends when you're, we're together, okay? I don't experience these symptoms the same time in the same place. They very rarely duplicate one another. So maybe you need to research and find out more about antibodies, not antibody, about, about this disease, and then maybe we could have an intelligent conversation, you know? They get very angry with me when I, when I, when I say things like this, uh, but it has happened at least 10 to 12 times where when I see the same person, they bring up, and I know they're trying to be nice. I know they're trying, not trying to be nasty or anything like that, but it's a very sensitive issue. And when you, and one of them was walking by when I wasn't, he thought I wasn't listening to a conversation and he, they said loud enough for me to hear, do you think Joel is lying to us? And when I found that out, I said to myself, I don't know if I could be friendly with a person like this. I really, really can't. It hurt me that much it, that I had to keep justifying over and over again this illness that I was, was going through. For someone who has Lewy body dementia, or any dementia for that matter, uh, the tone of voice, the way you speak to someone is all important. When Nikki was first diagnosed, we together made the decision that we would tell our friends what was going on. Why? So that they wouldn't be wondering and, and I wouldn't say gossiping, but chatting behind the scenes about what was going on and who were being, being uh, alarmed by some of the things they, they might see. So we told everybody, and why? Because of this very thing about how you approach somebody with Lewy body dementia. You know, the minute someone thinks that there's, there's something wrong, they start talking louder, you know, that, that kind of nonsense, which makes somebody feel so awful. So it, it's very important to keep an even tone, to keep talking as you always would to someone, whether they're understanding you or not. They are getting the vibrations. They're always getting the vibrations. That doesn't change. And you, you may think, well, they're not understanding what I'm saying. They may not be getting the words, but they sure are getting the feeling of what's coming to them and at them sometimes. So the calmness, the, the gentleness, the sweetness, the lovingness, and the dignity. I'm, I'm very high on the word dignity because I think, I don't think, I know, that one of the things that was most important to Nikki was his dignity. And one of the first things he said to me after he was diagnosed, after he said, look, we've had a great run. We cannot be sad. And that's a mantra I live by today. Same mantra. But he also said in the next sentence, please, Mary Lou, help me keep my dignity. That's huge. I still get choked up on that one because I, I was vigilant. I was very aware the whole time of allowing Nikki to keep his dignity. And if that meant, again, the two hours of getting dressed in the morning, then that was allowing him to keep his dignity. If it was allowing him to, to state whatever he needed to state, as we were going out with friends to a restaurant, 
we were sitting as a foursome, he would say, say something. I would let him get it out, and then I'd very gently guide it back to where I knew he wanted to go with it. it it's a gentility. It's not easy to do, and I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, you just do this, here's the formula, this is what you do. No, that's, that's not the way it goes. I mean, there are times you want to scream. You want to just use every expletive that you can think of. And you, and you have to do it, but never in front of the person, never in earshot of the person. Go into another room, scream into a pillow, do what you have to do, but don't let the person that you're caring for see it. I think there isn't one just correct way to communicate with someone with Lewy body dementia because, because of the fluctuations, you have to fluctuate yourself. You have to go with the flow. So if my husband was pretty with it at a certain time and knew who I was and uh, could just ask me questions. And I mean, literally, sometimes I would feel fooled. I knew, I knew he wasn't better, but there were times when he seemed so back to normal for an hour that I would think, oh, maybe this is it. Maybe he's now going to be okay. Uh, which was, you know, very much wishful thinking. But then those were times I could actually, it was like having Paul back. It was like having my husband back. And so I got to talk to him almost like uh, normal. And sometimes I would laugh at myself because I'd argue with him the way you argue with your spouse as if he could argue with me, but then it would become clear that he he couldn't follow an argument. He, it, was a, it wasn't a fair fight. So I learned that I had to remind myself, even when he seemed normal, that he still had Lewy body dementia. It took me a while to, to understand how to speak with my husband. So I would get very frustrated with him at first. Uh, he would use the wrong words. Um, it would take him too long to get the words out. And um, as he progressed, I just learned to slow down and to listen. And when he would say that, you know, there's a dragon out the window, <laughs> I would say, oh, yeah, I see it. Well, you know, but it's far. It's not going to hurt us. Isn't it pretty? You just sort of go with it. Um, and you let them speak and just um, just sit with it and, and not try to finish the conversation. Just, just be. So at one point, my mom had a therapist come and work with us. And that speech therapist gave my mom, the language to talk about how she wanted people to communicate with her. She shared a story about how, well, what she said is, um, ask me a question. So my mom asked the therapist a question and she turned her timer on, on her watch and she, and the therapist didn't answer for 10 whole seconds, just sat quietly for 10 seconds. And then she answered the question of my mom. And then she said, did that sound like I wasn't listening to you so long of waiting? And my mom, of course, said no. And I thought, well, that was a big blank space of no talk. <laughs> and the therapist said, somebody with Lewy body or Parkinson's or other dementias, it can take them 10 or even 20 seconds before they can find the answer. And so people need to give them time to say what they need to say. Well, shortly after that, my mom, one day we were talking and I was blah, 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 said, give me my 10 seconds <laughs> that she, she knew she wanted to say something and she didn't have, I wasn't giving her enough time to say what she wanted to say. And so communicating with somebody, even if I ask once, if I ask again, um, she may still be thinking about the answer. And so to not just feel like she's not listening or she didn't hear me or that and give. And lately she started to tell me she needs 20 seconds, not 10 seconds. The best way to communicate with a Lewy body dementia patient is with love. 
your words have to be seasoned with love. So you have to have a lot of patience, you know, giving them time to think, you know, speaking a word for them so that they will say, yes, right, you know, and um, so that they would feel like, you know, they're still here on earth. <laughs> What I would have liked and still do would be somebody to ask me, um, what would help you? You know, this is a hard journey. What would help you at times when the journey's got some bumps in it? And for me, it's, it's really simple. It's just a really big hug, you know, just hug me. And if I need to cry, I'll cry. And that's what I need. But nobody asks me what I need. <laughs> um, and I, there are some people I'm comfortable enough with that either they know or they don't know, I'll go up and hug. But um, I guess if you do know, it's okay to talk about it. I think the person that has the Louis body um, doesn't want it to be necessarily a secret and wants to be able if they are having a bad day to ask for help or if they are having a grand experience to share it. Um, so I would say be willing to speak to them and uh, look for ways to make it positive to hear. Not that, oh, it's no big deal or it'll go away or nothing that is not true, uh, but ways to look at it in a positive way. And even something as simple as telling the person, I'm glad I can be here for you. You have to be patient, number one, you know, and you have to be, I think sometimes you have to put yourself basically in the head and think like they think and realize that the things that they're doing is not, what they want to do, but it's what they feel is best for them at that particular time. And sometimes it might be the wrong thing, but telling them that it's the wrong thing is not gonna help. So you have to find a way in which I personally am able to get my husband to do a lot of things by just being really kind and loving to him. He responds, very well to that you know and I do not confront him if he's saying something that is not whatever I just don't confront him I just say okay or I listen to his conversation sometimes he tells me a long story about something that has nothing to do with anything I might ask him a question about something but he tells me something completely different from what we're you know talking about but I just listen you know I listen and I agree with some of the things that he's saying because whatever he's saying makes sense to him and you know i just go ahead and go along with that how to speak to somebody uh when living with uh, that is living with louis body and how to talk to them well first of all i uh you have to make an analysis of how advanced they are some people are very advanced other people are still communicative but I always say this, and, and you know, and I do this with really everybody in my life. It's not only with Louis Body. I don't care if I'm speaking to somebody with terminal cancer or whatever. I speak to them as a human being. That's all you have to do. You don't have to say, oh, I wonder if they're worried they're going to understand this. Or I wonder if they're going to do this. Just speak to them as you'd speak to your loved one. And be aware that if they are suffering from Louis Body, and you know this, uh, they may not recognize all the words or they may not understand fully or they may have a disturbance or something may happen. They may have a out outburst or something, but you don't have to react to it just like anything else. You just talk to them and understand you're talking to somebody you know or love. They have a disease. You know, I think might say they have a broken foot. You'd still talk to them the same way. So just be understanding is the main thing, because I think. If you get frustrated with somebody with Louis body, who are the, what was that? What, 
And if you get frustrated with them, I think that's going to have a negative effect on the Lewy body patient because then they're going to, I know what happened to me, I would get anxious. <laughs> if you yelled at me or you said, what did you say to make any sense? I would get anxious and then I would shut down and then I would probably cascade down. So just talk normally and understand that many may not be able to have a completely normal conversation with you, but they're still people. They understand. They're loving. They can feel you, too. They understand you. They don't just, it's just not words. They're looking in your eyes. They're feeling you. Maybe you touch their arm. I mean, uh, it's all of that. Communication, you know, is 90% nonverbal. Most people don't understand that. They think it's all verbal. It isn't. And I've studied communication all my life. It's really nonverbal. Looking at them and smiling in a warm touch and, uh, you know, and just talk like they're anybody else. Because if you talk down to them, they're going to recognize that. So you just be your normal self. That's all. We're no different to anybody else. Speak to us like you would speak to anybody else. Okay, we might come out with some jim jam jumbled words sometimes, you know. But within those words, if you listen, you might make some sense out of it. Because sometimes when people have Lewy bodies or any dementia, and they're having some of the words more so with Lewis. And they're having some of the words and they can't get it out. Sometimes you'll hear the word pain. You could pick up on that. Sometimes you'll hear the word thirsty. Sometimes you'll hear the word hot. And it's we are trying to say how we're feeling at the time. And if you can pick up on that, you will help enormously. Because I always use the example, um, Linda's Norma, is can you imagine having toothache? and not being able to tell anybody you've got toothache, how horrific would that be? But if you listen to people with dementia and you talk to them and you try and understand them best you can and I trust that little bit more patience, but anybody else with living bodies, why would you talk any difference? I've had, I've had people say to me, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't know you. And I said, why are you talking funny? You know, why Why was your voice suddenly changed? You know? And, and they always drop the shoulder. Have you noticed? If you say to somebody, I've got your mention, they go, oh, I'm sorry. And the head moves. It goes, ah, oh, it's called the dementia drop, we call it, right? And they always go, oh, I'm sorry. It's all that about. They don't need to be. I have dementia. I have a disease of the brain. You probably got, I don't know, you probably got backache or leg ache. You might have appendicitis. But you, people don't go, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I go really quiet, do they? That's the difference. You've got to remember that we're no different than you. <laughs> 